we are back for our noon session. Um, and I am going to take over to introduce our next speaker because we didn't want him to introduce himself. Um, so uh, our next talk is uh, with Nick Franchino, who you've been hearing from most of the morning. Uh, Nick's a GIS manager at our Department of Regional Planning. But perhaps more importantly, in context of this presentation, Nick was uh, one of the key folks who helped to build out the uh, Experience Builder site that is the uh, the virtual exhibit hall and some of the other components of our virtual GIS Day event. So um, without um, some of these uh, technologies that we've been able to leverage through the last couple of days, uh, we wouldn't be where we are today uh, with an event uh, that's been as smooth as it has been. Um, that said, um, Nick is gonna give a more of a technical presentation, I believe now sort of talking about behind the scenes, how he, he developed some of these tools and things. And uh, for those who are maybe new to Experience Builder or haven't used it yet, um, this is a great uh, tool set that you can use in a lot of your uh, GIS and, and associated projects. So with that, I'm gonna say, take it away, Nick. All right, all right. Thank you, Steve, appreciate it. Yeah, so thanks everybody. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to be brief too, probably won't be too technical. We have some slides and then uh, I'll just go through the exhibit hall real quick as a couple of things for it. So what I just wanted to do is, and also this was during lunch, so the idea too is this is kind of filler, just in case we didn't uh, need it or didn't need it. But I think it's still some valuable information because Experience Builder from Esri did choose to, uh, did work out to be a nice, uh, a nice product for us. Uh, so this is what I'm gonna talk about again, just kind of just introduce it to you, show you what it is. Um, we'll talk about the uh, exhibit hall working a little bit with templates because we did have to make, we ended up making about 40 pages. So we needed templates to make everything look kind of seamless and look uh, the same, which is what you would want to do with your organization. Um, and also a uh, little bit of tips and tricks and some examples of what other people are doing in LA County with it. So again, it's a relatively new product from Esri. Um, I realized when I was at the Esri UC, which was virtual, they had made a page for the, their exhibit hall and I kind of looked and we modeled it after that. I was like, we can make that same thing using Esri's product. And, uh, and so that was, the, that was the idea with it. So this is ultimately what it, what it ends up being. So if you click on the exhibit hall, uh, this is what ends up showing up, right? You get the, the top page. It's just a, it's a graphic and there's text. It's basically a WYSIWYG. I'm dropping components to it. And I'll show you a couple things with that. But we ended up with this these cards basically and the cards then are these icons and then you put in a button and then you that button goes to a link and goes to things that you want to see um again this is just another screenshot of that so again this is i, I really want people to see this because ultimately this there's a ton of information about experience builder and to be honest i'm showing it from the perspective of how we used it for gis day you're going to use it um, to link to uh, more like a portal, using it to link to apps and different other things built. And that's what we've seen is probably the best real use case for it, other than uh, uh, an event to, uh, to show off GIS and things like that. But it does work well. There's a lot of good resources on this page. And really, the how it works, this how it works component, where you can see there's images there, you can see there's little cards on the bottom and it's this kind of graphical representation with links that makes it really powerful. So these are the kind of the main things of how it works on that page. You build your app based on a template or you can start from scratch. Uh, you bring in maps and apps, uh, maps and feature layers. So you can bring in maps if you want or you don't have to because again, uh, our exhibit hall page doesn't have any maps. When you click on a department or a sponsor, then you do get some maps if they chose to embed them. Or you can put some rich media like a YouTube video and you'll see that. Um, you can add widgets to it and put things in there. Again, that's the kind of mapping side of it. And of course you can customize the look and feel to match the branding of your organization. We matched our branding to, to GIS day, to our event. Um, and again, it just makes it a really nice and easy way to interact um, and let people uh, see the information in the format that you are that you want them to see it in. So again, we set up a draft template. We we picked one, and again, I started with the template that I saw from Esri, 
and uh, from Esri, I'm sorry, from the Esri UC. And I picked one of the vendors that they had, which is our vendor in the ga in the gallery or sponsor, Verta GIS. And I took their page and I said, and I mocked it up. And then, and then what I did is um, one of the other departments had had been using Experience Builder, for showcasing what they were doing, and so I kind of used that um, and created one for my department. And so that's how the and and then I worked with Public Works and people on our planning committee, and we set up a template for that. So we had two main templates: one for sponsors and exhibitors, and one for our departments. And again, we picked one uh, template and we went from there. And through this, for the people that are the exhibitors and sponsors on our call, you know, we sent them a, a, a document, like a form to fill out, and they gave us that information, including some graphics and images and links to include, and they gave us that, and that's what we filled in to make uh, to make those pages. So this is kind of the layout and the look and feel when you get into it. This is what, if I clicked on it right now to go and, and make a change, if somebody said, oh, we had a typo or we need to fix something on it, this is where I would go to do that. Um, it, it has some things in the left that I'm navigating through. Um, the, the content there, you name the different content if you need to, depending on how many items that you have. Notice we have lots of blocks of text, blocks of, of components in there. Um, we can change the theme of this to, we're choosing the dark theme because again, it goes with our GIS day, logo and graphic. And then at the top is a key piece. Am I setting it up? Because it's a responsive adaptive display app. So am I using it in a desktop? Am I looking at it at a tablet or am I looking at it in a mobile device? So that's the idea of the little icons in the top, uh, top middle. So again, working with templates, there's about 20 or so uh, that are kind of out of the box, things that Esri has. Um, again, kind of just pick and choose and use them and try a few things, and that's how you kind of figure it out. Uh, so again, these are those, I think it was 21, but one's like blank full screen. So what you're doing is you're just dropping components in there. You're dropping a web map. You're dropping a dashboard. Uh, you're dropping a, a, a YouTube video and a link and a how-to or a map with a control on it. Those are the things that these templates provide. And I wanna say that for GIS Day Exhibit Hall, we use the Epic template. So the Epic template is the one uh, that we chose. Uh, and again, this then the other thing is once you once you select anything, make anything or select anything, you can then make your own templates. So uh, this is just what I set up. This is the one owned by me that started for uh, that was I hit this plus button there on the bottom of that card and that got me into every page. So when I created the one for Eagle View and I created the one for Allen Instruments and Sanborn and all of our sponsors that we have, again, make sure you go to the exhibit hall and check them out. That's where I clicked the plus and started making those edits. Um, so some, the, some things again, the, the interface um, is pretty simple. It's pretty straightforward. It's a WYSIWYG um, component-based thing. Um, the, there are pages, so you can set up multiple pages. If you go to our public works department, you'll notice that they have set up multiple pages because public, our public works is a big organization. And so they do addressing, they have a thing on LIDAR, they have a thing on their traditional mapping. So the pages are a way to break down content then uh, further that you need to. And again, I mentioned that you configure it for a mobile device. And I remember from yesterday, um, one of the talks, right, when they talked about starting with mobile devices and working your way the other way. To be honest, our exhibit hall isn't the greatest because when you do set it up for, um, for mobile, you have to think vertical. And our cards in the exhibit hall really are horizontal. So it doesn't quite lend itself to that, but the individual pages work a lot better. And so those ones are, and for the sponsors and for the departments. But when you think for mobile, that's one of the main tips and tricks, think vertical design. And so again, widgets, actions, and triggers, again, not so much in what we did with the exhibit hall, but if you're gonna use this in your organization and for mapping and for projects, most likely you are gonna do some of that. Again, I said it's going to be uh, quick. I only have a, a few more slides, to be honest with you. Um, so, the because I wanted to be brief, I wanted to just make sure and cover this because I, I think it is worth exploring. And again, right here, this is where I took, this is our department's page that we had set up. And then this is where now I looked at, I'm in the tablet format. 
and I'm seeing how it's going to look. And so you have to change um, some of the settings and the main settings, and I, I didn't put a live uh, link to this or a screenshot, but multi, you're, you're, you're kind of clicking on the style button a lot. And once you start using it, you get familiar with it pretty quick. And the main things are, you can make it a specific height exactly, you can make it custom, or you can make it or auto, or you can make it stretch and it'll fit what's in there. And you play with that a little bit. It's, it's uh, and again, this is still a first generation product, but it's been working well for us. And again, it was really good for the exhibit hall. So I think this is your best resource because when I was thinking of what I wanted to put in here and get you info to really talk about it, um, by the way, Byrne was one of our speakers at GIS Day, I want to say about four or five years ago. Great speaker, great, you know, GIS evangelist for Esri and really an ArcGIS online. And so he knows this product pretty well and uh, gave some tips and tricks. And so that's one I don't know if uh, we'll end up putting that into the chat somewhere so you guys can can just click on that link instead of uh, trying to write that down. But we'll keep it for a second. And again, that's the really good walkthrough of the template gallery, the builder interface, pages and widgets, and the content and style. So other examples in LA County, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna breeze through this really quick. And the top two are public facing, and then the other four are internal apps. So they're just real small screenshots. It's just kind of to give you a, a highlight real quick of how people were using it. So this COVID-19 public gallery, there's the link to it. It's, you could just search that in our AGOL. It's used as a portal, a page showing each of these apps because they created so many apps for COVID-19. And it's got 170K views already. So this was kind of the stopping off point or the starting point to get into the various apps that they had developed. Really good use of it. Um, I actually created this working with ISD and our CEO for the census response. Um, as that was coming, we had till October. And what happens is probably about June, July timeframe, we had made one app and then we had made a side-by-side -side app and then we had made a dashboard. And so the idea was put it all in one place. And that's again, what Experience Builder does really well. You can put it into one place and just you put the cards and the buttons and it makes it really easy for people to get to what they wanna to get to. Other examples is this, uh, uh, opera goal uh, operation in uh, the, uh, I'm trying to think, do I have these? Oh, maybe that's the way I did it. Okay, one screenshot for that one for our Office of Emergency Management on the right was something related to ISD and custodial things related to COVID-19. It's kind of a use re uh, request form. Uh, this was related to training by the EOC, just training people on how to make dashboards and use them. And again, the Experience Builder was just the wrapper for the dashboard and made it really clean. And then this, this is related to that. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, that was the election request form. I got that one wrong. This is the custodial request central. And again, really good, just a couple of buttons that link to other components. And that is your, again, your wrapper. So some takeaways, really, because I'm, I'm pretty much done with this and we'll get to a couple questions if there are, but Try Experience Builder, see what it can do. If you're using ArcGIS Online, if you're an Esri customer, you already have access to it. There's nothing extra to do for it. It's got a nice little interface to it. Again, our my, my what I've seen so far is that portal use being kind of the number one thing to start with, but I know it's gonna be more than that. And I know it is more than that for other organizations, but you will find other uses for it. And, uh, and again, I think that is really uh, the power of it. So with that, um, I was going to open it up to questions, um, but I do want to show one thing. So I'm going to try this. I know I, I know I shouldn't, but I'm going to do it anyway. Um, Steve's like, what? Okay. I'm still sharing my screen. So here's the exhibit hall. So just really quick, what I'm going to do, I just want to show you that adaptive response. So here it is on the desktop view. And as I drag, watch how it gets smaller. And that's still desktop, but then now it thinks at some point it's going to switch and think I'm on a tablet. And I don't know exactly when that's going to happen, but there it did. And now, now it actually thinks I'm a mobile device. And so again, I told you, let's do this actually. Let's go to another department and then we'll do the same thing. That is easier. So I'm going to go to my regional planning page. So see how there it is for the desktop. That's my department's page that I created. You can 
sign our guest book if you'd like. But if we do this and I bring it down, now there's the tablet view. So it just shrunk it. And then here, there's the, there's the phone view. So if I'm on a phone, I still get pretty much everything. Context might be a little off. Might something might be cut off a little bit, but overall your your content is there. So that's just one thing that I wanted to highlight and uh, we'll open it up for anything. Sure, and okay. I just wanna make a, a comment and then we'll take uh, questions too. So if you have other questions, put them in the Q&A window. Um, I have to say, as the County Geographic Information Officer, I always joke with the staff, I'm the last person you want messing with our GIS infrastructure and technology. I was able to learn Experience Builder yeah. in about 15 minutes and yeah. actually edit and update pages. I, I, you know, 20 years ago, I could have coded stuff and it would have been fine, but AML went away. Some of you know what that means. <laughs> um, you know, I, I, I'm kind of, you know, moved into a different realm in my job. But I, I have yeah. to say, from my perspective, this has been a really nice tool. It's a really easy to use and learn. Um, and it really didn't take a lot of time. Um, so I would encourage, as Nick said, uh, check it out. It's, it's a nice, uh, nice platform for combining your maps and your other content um, in something different than like a story map would be. Yeah. Um, so we do have a question uh, for you, Nick. What server does this template use? Does it consume credits when we publish data and is an account or license needed? And can it be customized as a developer version? Okay, I think I can answer a little bit of that. I think some of the rest might be on that overview page. Um, it's so it doesn't consume any credits, as far as I know, unless your app itself or the behind the scenes stuff would use credits. But the the uh, all the things that we've set up for these pages, all this stuff is included in our regular ArcGIS Online licensing. So credits are or would be like geocoding service behind the scenes or other things. If I'm serving a map in that um, in that Experience Builder page, and that page is consuming credits somehow, then and yes, credits will get from that page being embedded, but the but the app itself uh, does not. And I, I believe there is a developer version of it. I did see that link the other day when I was uh, preparing for this. Okay. Um, and I don't see any other questions. Uh, come. Oh, there's one. Uh, in what way does the experience builder differ from story maps? Okay, sure. And I think uh, that is a good question. And, and actually when I started it, um, that's why I got into it because uh, I want to say Experience Builder maybe eight or eight or ten months old. It's not that far, but it's right when I saw it was right around the time of COVID. And I know Story Maps really well because we've even taught Story Maps classes to different people in the county, and we're always advocating for people to use Story Maps. But Story Maps have a strict template to follow. Now you can they've changed that on certain ones and they have a bunch of templates but the idea is for story maps is to have that look and feel that's consistent and then you can go and and vary it but there wasn't one that kind of did everything and experience builder is kind of like the you can put multiple story maps in there you can embed things better because even story maps sometimes like had problems embedding a dashboard or would have problems with some other pieces. And they built this as like the wrapper for all things ArcGIS Online. Almost all their things can get in there nicely. So just a little cleaner experience. Very good. Um, and another question came in. Um, I saw a screenshot of the election form. Where's that located? I'm thinking of making one for my EOC to log in coming calls. Uh, why not send us an email to that again? That was an internal app, and actually, I, I think it's um, it's not there anymore, even because our election is over. But if you send us an email, um, I'll get you to the person at ISD. Steve works at person at ISD that made that, and we'll we'll get you the information of of uh, how that can help you. And another one um, would Experience Builder um, a lot, templates allow insertion of custom HTML codes? There's an embed function. I'm not sure how much custom HTML, to be honest with you. Um, there is uh, two main embed places in there. Um, one is for videos. And then the other one are just are different formats. 
Um, I'm not sure what else you can go from that. That's a little bit beyond what I went into. And unfortunately, my because the way I'm connected right now, I can't just go in and check. I would try to just look for you. If I go in right now, it, it doesn't let me based on how I'm connected to the network to make this all work. So sorry about that. But I think just take a look. There's some embedded options. There's different things you can put in there. All right, um, another question. Uh, do you know if the Near Me widget is available through Experience Builder? It is, but I believe it's in there through, um, it's in there through another map or app that you would embed. So the way I understand it is, I don't think that Near Me is, is a default in there like a table of contents is or a layer list is, but I think you would you could embed a, the near me a near me app. I'm not sure if the near me widget, to be honest with you. Okay, very good. And then one last question that's come in is: Do you know if there's a way to trigger an embedded web app widget? I think that's a. I think you can do that, and I think that's exactly what the triggers do. Okay. You can trigger a call to a, a web app or a component that you have in there, or just open something into another page. Okay. Well, very good. Um, I think that's all the questions and we're close up. Oh, there's one more. <laughs> Last question. Um, and then we're going to, we'll wrap this up. Um, so how does Experience Builder differ from Esri sites? When I first saw that, I wasn't sure what you're referring to. If you're referring to Esri sites as a site like that goes with Hub a little bit, then I think it's just different because I'll say this, right when COVID started, we were looking at Hub for multiple products, for multiple things that Hub could do that were similar to a story map or similar um, to what Experience Builder is. But Hub, Hub's more for open data. It's more for open data. And, and then you have sites and pages for like um, your programs or your initiatives, right? And so I think sites is like that. It goes with Hub and Experience Builder is just kind of a free form. You can put in any Esri components into it. And so it gives you, like you could put a Hub site within Experience Builder. So that's kind of the difference. It was more of their open platform to put in all the other components. All right. So we are at time. 